Once upon a time, in a small town filled with curious children, there lived a boy named Alex who had an insatiable appetite for adventure. One summer day, while exploring the woods behind his house, Alex stumbled upon a hidden laboratory. The lab was owned by a quirky scientist named Dr. Bunsen, known for his strange experiments and mysterious creations. Dr. Bunsen had always kept his lab a secret, but today, as fate would have it, he left the door slightly ajar. Intrigued, Alex peeked inside. The lab was filled with bubbling potions, blinking machines, and strange gadgets. But what caught Alex's eye was a small, glowing cage in the corner of the room. Inside the cage was a purple creature unlike anything Alex had ever seen. It had large, playful eyes, big ears, and a fluffy tail that wagged with excitement. The creature seemed to smile at Alex, showing off its tiny, sharp teeth. Alex couldn't resist he had to know more. Just then, Dr. Bunsen entered the room, startled to see a young boy standing in his lab. But instead of being angry, the scientist smiled warmly. Ah, I see you've met Riffle, Dr. Bunsen said, motioning to the purple creature. He's one of my latest creations set a mix of science and a bit of magic. What is he? Alex asked, his eyes wide with wonder. Riffle is a unique bet designed to be the perfect companion for a child with a big imagination like yours, Dr. Bunsen explained. He's loyal, smart, and loves to play. But he's also a bit mischievous, so you'll have to keep an eye on him. Dr. Bunsen could see the excitement in Alex's eyes and decided to offer him a deal. How about this, Alex? You can take Riffle home and be his caretaker. But you must promise to bring him back to me once a week so I can check on him. Alex couldn't believe his luck. He eagerly agreed, and Dr. Bunsen handed him the cage with Riffle inside. As soon as they left the lab, Riffle's cage door swung open, and the little creature leapt into Alex's arms, nuzzling him affectionately. From that day on, Alex and Riffle became inseparable. They went on countless adventures together, exploring the woods, solving mysteries, and playing pranks on Alex's friends. Riffle had the ability to change colors and shapes which made their escapades even more exciting. But despite his mischievous nature, Riffle always knew when Alex needed a friend the most. As the weeks passed, Alex kept his promise to Dr. Bunsen, bringing Riffle back to the lab for checkups. Each time, the scientist would tweak Riffle's abilities, making him even more extraordinary. One day, however, Dr. Bunsen called Alex with urgent news. Alex. Riffle's powers are growing stronger. I've discovered that he can open portals to other worlds. This could be dangerous if not controlled. Alex knew that this new power could lead to incredible adventures, but it also meant great responsibility. With Dr. Bunsen's guidance, Alex and Riffle learned to control the portals, using them to explore new dimensions and meet other extraordinary creatures. Together, Alex and Riffle became heroes in their town using their newfound abilities to protect their world from any danger that slipped through the portals. And although their adventures were sometimes perilous, Alex knew that as long as he had Riffle by his side, there was nothing they couldn't face. And so, the boy and his purple pet lived happily, always ready for the next adventure that awaited them just beyond the next portal. When I was out in town today, I had come across an old pawn shop tucked away at the end of a street full of other various stores and restaurants, and decided to take a look inside. It was filled with a real diverse range of items, including everything from old computers, to dusty VHS tapes, to models and much, much more. The one item in particular caught my attention. It was a crown, sitting alone, appearing very out of place resting upon a stack of old cooking magazines. It was obviously made out of plastic and intended to be a part of costume, or something along that nature something about it was rather alluring to me though. When I went to buy the fake regalia, the fairly eccentric looking owner insisted that it was on him, but first he'd love to see me try it on. He wore a colorful but tacky Hawaiian shirt and had messy gray hair coupled with a thin, long goatee, and despite the fact that I can't recall ever meeting him before. Something about his voice sounded so familiar. Whilst this was a rather unusual request to make, he was giving me this thing for free, and I saw no harm in indulging him. Placing it upon my head, I found that it fit me pretty well. As I turned to look at myself in a mirror beside the counter, 
very regal indeed, I think, whilst smiling playfully at myself. However, when I turn around to ask the guy what he thought of it, he was gone, vanished seemingly into thin air. I look around in a confused silence for him, but he was nowhere to be seen. That would be the least of my worries soon however, when the crown then started to glow upon my head, getting heavier and more shiny with each passing second. Almost as if it was becoming. Real? I feel my hands then starting to get kind of still and rigid too, closing involuntarily into fists as I begin to panic. My skin starts to look pale, the color flashing away when the elusive store owner makes himself known to me once more, dropping his former human disguise. He giggles to himself, reveling in my shock as I realize that whatever is about to come, it certainly isn't going to be boring. Carlos was just walking home on his way home from school one day. He never missed any days and always made sure to get to school on time. But, on this day however, Carlos discovered his way of getting home was closed. He saw a couple of construction workers working on the road. He decided to ask them what was going on. He went over to one of the workers and said, Excuse me sir, could you mind telling me why the road is closed? The roads are currently icy kid. But don't worry, they'll be fine tomorrow, he explained. Okay, said Carlos disappointed. So, Carlos went on his way to find somewhere else to go. While he was trying to find somewhere to go, he saw an abandoned building. It was an abandoned daycare called, Playcare. Playcare? He asked himself. He decided to walk up to it to have a good look at it. He saw it up close and saw it was really dark and scary, although it looked scary. Carlos wanted to have a good look at it. I might have a quick look inside, he thought. Maybe there might be a way for me to get home in this way. So, Carlos walked inside, looking for a way to get home. It was very dark and echoey, but Carlos tried not to be afraid. Suddenly, he saw a light switch. Maybe this will give this place some more light. So, he tried flicking the switch but instead a necklace with a moon shape at the end appeared in front of him. The necklace then flew to the ground. Say, what's this? Thought Carlos. He picked up the necklace. He examined it and thought, my broken bar. I wonder why this light switch gave me this necklace. He suddenly felt temptation to put it on. Although it was made a few seconds ago, I really want to wear it. So, he put it on his neck as fast as he could. I thought the necklace was kinda cool. Suddenly, he felt pain around his body. Oh, 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 a broken bar. What's happening to me? He moaned out loud. He felt purple fur spread across his body, which absorbed his clothes. He cheeks turned bright red. He felt his pupils turn black as the outside turn white. His ears went inside his body, making him deaf temporarily, but luckily two new triangle-shaped ears appeared on his head. His nose turned black and his face pushed out into a muzzle. He grew a long tail on his backside. He felt his teeth move into his mouth and his mouth turned into a toothless grin. He then shrank down to the size of a stool. Before he could react, he felt all his memories beginning to fade. He almost started to think he always looked like this and always lived here. Soon. Catnap was in his place. Catnap wondered why he was in this area of the playcare. So, he decided to go somewhere where he was more comfortable. 